Ooh, welcome in. All right, guys. I am back at this. Uh, Y'all remember this Dodge Charger? I was trying to diagnose a uh, no start. It was a crank. It was just a no start. Well, anyway, here is the part. A uh, brand new part. Brand new fuel pump. Now, guys. Um, yeah, see, ain't nothing changed. It's still hiding a lot. I do not want to push it in, so I will attempt to make this repair right here outside. And you know what, guys? I'm taking y'all alone on the ride with me. Okay? Because, uh, like I said, I don't want to push it. Now, uh, be sure and watch part one. I'll link it right here so you'll understand why we're replacing this. I don't want to sound redundant. Oh, I don't want to re be repeating myself. <clears throat> okay? You don't just... Uh, these fuel pumps are fairly expensive, so you don't want to be guessing it if one's your problem or not <laughs> okay now like i said before now say it again a fuel pump will never run don't matter if it's brand new don't matter if it's your fifth fuel pump if you do not have a power source and a ground source going to it it will never run so okay that's the diagnosis we did in part one that's why i really need you guys to go back and watch part one and by the way the blue and the orange wire <coughs> It's the power source and the black and orange is the ground. The other three are merely um, sending units. Okay, sending unit wires. All right, guys, so I'm going to grab a couple of tools. Uh, this is a special tool, man. Uh, you're going to need uh, <clears throat> this fuel pump retainer tool. Okay, now I, I got this and I'm going to use this, but if you don't have one of these, a big chisel and a hammer guys i mean the same thing we was doing before the tools came out it's just that i needed a tool because i do them often okay and of course your breaker bar go on top all right here's my breaker bar all right uh so let me see what else what else what else now before you yank all this off see i'm not in the shop so i'm gonna be unable to do this part you really should blow take an air blower and blow because you don't want any the trash to end up in the tank or around the seal area or anything like that. So if you're in the shop, uh, spend a little time trying to clean the surrounding areas up around the pump. All right. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about this some more later, but <laughs> depending on the fuel pump setup, uh, you may have to change this. Uh, not so much change the connector, but rewire it. All right. In fact, we're going to talk about that a little bit more uh, when I come back. So let me go to a quick ad break. When I get back, we're going to discuss uh, the parts and the wiring and the connector. And then we're going to get this fuel pump out, guys. So stay tuned. or go anywhere. I will be right back. All right, guys. So we have our new fuel pump right here. Oh, this is Mopar, guys. I highly recommend Mopar. You get a better warranty and you get, most importantly, better quality. In my opinion, now these are just my opinion. I'm not sponsored by Mopar or anything like that. Just through my years of working on cars, I've been pretty successful by using OEM quality parts. If it's a Ford, I try to get some uh, motorcraft parts and vice versa. Okay, so it's just highly what I recommend. All right, so let's see what we got here, guys. Yep, brand new fuel pump. And this particular model will require you to install or rewire the connector. And I think the goal behind that was to remove. Remember I said earlier, I thought that was a bad idea to have a ground wire <laughs> right beside the power wire. I mean, anything can happen right there. And we talking about, we right here with fuel. So you don't want any kind of arcing around uh, fuel vapor. Or anything like that, man. That could get extremely dangerous. So, I'm thinking that's the story behind that. I don't know. Uh, the size of the wire changed. So, it might be uh, there to carry more amperage. Uh, I'm not sure. I will read up on it some more and get back with you guys. But for now, uh, what else we got in here? Yeah, new seal. Okay, you even got instructions. So, yeah. Uh, you will be required to change the harness in other words guys hear me out when you put this new fuel pump in if you merely plug this connector up you may not start because 
if the connector is suspected to be or expected to be rewired, that means the internals of the pump is also rewired. So this is a must. It's not one of those, ah, I don't want to get around to it. You're literally not going to start if you don't rewire this. Uh, I once had customers um, or shops bring cars into the, to the shop because they put a new fuel pump in it. Three new fuel pumps in it and still wondering why it won't start. The fuel pump internal electrical portion also is rewired. So it doesn't even recognize the previous sensor. Now you can cross these to put the power supply where it's supposed to be or where it's looking for it at the connector. You can cross them manually and start the car. I've had to do that before, but yeah, you're never going to start until 12 volts and ground get into the pump in its right respected order okay placement is a big importance all right so guys oh man i'm talking too much let's go ahead and get this fuel pump out of here one more ad break guys and we're gonna go we're gonna get started I got... all right guys let's get to it man let's get the, the special tool we're just gonna find some grooves in the retainer to set the special tool in lock that in place all right now grab your breaker bar i have my patented breaker bar right here okay you got to get you a nice good angle on this thing now you got to find some leverage <laughs> to get this thing a good whack just one good whack actually because you're only trying to clear one detent all right let's see what i can do here oh that worked go figure fuel is spilling out you know what that means guys they is full of fuel. All right, so they obviously thought uh, the reason they wasn't starting was because it was low on fuel. That's what people tend to do. All right, so I'm going inside to grab my sucker to suck this down to a reasonable level. So I'm gonna cap this back off. We're gonna go grab a uh, suction to to suck out some of this fuel you really should not be replacing a fuel pump if you're totally full of gas that could get dangerous guys who knows what this fuel feel remember now we're talking about we're in the rear of the seat rear of the car okay so obviously this fuel is going to leak on top of the tank and then make its way to the ground all right so what now there's no way where well, there's a way you can know that if the car is full of fuel by looking at the gas gauge okay so i did not do that so i did not think to check was it full of fuel but i get to see firsthand that it is full of fuel so i'm gonna go grab me a sucker and we're gonna try to suck this down to a reasonable level so we can uh complete the fuel tank replacement job all right stay tuned guys man i'm sorry i i I wasn't planning on taking another air break, but it looks like I'm going to have to, guys. I will be right back. All right, guys. Thanks for staying with me. Let's get this cap back off. I have my sucker machine out here. I'm a sucker. And we're going to stick this in here. Whoa. Suck this down to a decent level. Man, they topped this thing off real high. Amazing how people think the reason they car will not start solely because they out of fuel. So let's tip top it all the way. Let's just keep clicking the handle just until it can't take no more. Cause that's exactly what this look like guys. I am sucking this out and it's still a lot. They feel this up to the T. We gotta get this down to a reasonable level. Remember guys, uh, while we do this, this is actually the primary fuel pump, okay? This car is equipped with two uh, primary one that does the most work, okay? Um, the secondary pump is also important, but you do not necessarily have to replace it because uh, you're not getting any fuel pressure, all right? Now, I got a separate video I'm going to discuss uh, the pump setup, the fuel delivery system is what I'm going to title it. Okay, I'm going to discuss both pumps, why it's needed, why it's there, and what one do that the other do not do. 
and uh the whole fuel delivery system i will discuss on that video so that's why guys i really if you're not subscribed i highly suggest you subscribe so you don't miss any of this content because i try to talk throughout the repairs okay it's nothing like watching a video of a guy replace a component and he not tell you why he replacing it i mean this one here is fairly obvious uh they wasn't getting any fuel to the engine the engine wouldn't start that's fairly fairly self-explanatory but uh i guess discussing the fuel pump and why we were placing it in the first place uh you know could carry for good conversation okay especially while we're busy sucking out uh fuel from a gas tank my whole sucker is almost full and this level still not below that means, yes, they tipped this one off. Click, click, click. They just kept pumping. You hear that? I suck out some more. I got to get below that level. Now, uh, the risk you carry in doing this is what if uh, the customer starts wondering why they, need, why they are now at a three-quarter tank of gas? As opposed to a super full tank of gas that they have. So you might, Harry, you might have to explain that to the customer. And that should be an easy uh, explanation. Okay, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So this is taking a while, guys. So I'm going to shut the camera off. When I get back, we're going to... Um, <laughs> no, there's no need for another air break. I just want to prolong my filming. All right? I might have to film something extremely important. And if my memory card is full that will uh, allow that not to happen guys so i'm gonna cut it off when i come back we're gonna be taking this pump out all right guys welcome back i'm back i got this down to a wow i actually had to do two loads guys two loads all right i got it down to a reasonable level all right so let's get with it man we wasted enough time it's what you call the unexpected all right First thing we need to do, let's get this housing off. So let's uh, disconnect these two connectors right here. You will not be needing this anymore. All right, we can dispose of that properly. Now, let me bring the camera down so y'all can see this. All right, guys, take a look at this, okay? You got one, you got three transfer tubes actually coming from the secondary fuel pump assembly. All right, we got to get all three of these off. So this, this one here, just push in the terminal and lift up on it. Okay, as such. Now the other two, they fairly, right here, just lift up on them, lift them up out of their shell. Don't worry about mixing them up because they go by size I got one out there's the other one now it's safe to make sure you wear protective handwear too guys it's safe to remove the pump assembly out of the tank careful not to spill fuel inside the engine compartment or the passenger's compartment alright this is a mess because there's the fuel tank was full alright here we go. Y'all see that? That is the second load, and this is full right here. I've already had to empty it once. That is the old fuel pump. This thing has been totally redesigned, guys. Now, you can go in the same way you came out. Uh... I ain't sure you want to, well, that really, really wouldn't be in a problem disconnect this, but most guys go in with this first and then connect this connector and then go in with the second part. All right, so let's get it. All right, guys, first thing we want to do, let's get this old seal out of the way. Dispose of it properly in anticipation for the new seal. Okay, now we got to clean this seal channel out, guys. We don't want nothing interfering with the sealing process so just grab your rag 
and go around the seal area. That's why I highly suggest you blow in this area before you take it out. Unfortunately, I'm outside doing this because I have no way to pull the car into the shop to make the repairs. Besides, I don't really need a lift to do this repair. That's the only reason you need a shop to do such repairs because you need a way to get the car in and out. And plus your tools are inside the shop. So you will not have to transport tools if you're inside the shop. All right, let's place the new seal in this correct spot. Now, I decided not to unhook this from the connector. I can just simply set it in here and reverse the removal procedure of the hoses, guys. You can't get it wrong. Like I say, it's size. It's, uh, it hooks up by the size. So just put the hose, snap them in place just like you released them. The big one go in the big slot. The small one go in the small slot. Fairly simple. Now for the last part. Do not forget the connector guys. You have to put the connector in this last little slot right here. As such. Now it's time to insert the last piece. Put it in the perspective holes. It's spring loaded, so slowly compress down on it. Make sure your seal is in the right spot. Grab your retainer. Set it on here as such. Line it up with the retainer slot. Give it a hand turn so it will lock it in place. Now use your tool. To officially lock it in place one good turn and the indentions should be in the right spot okay because I'm using a breaker bar I'm limited to how I can turn this guy so Let's give it a good push. That's it. All right, guys. I'm in the right indentions. Just try to clean up any excess fuel. And that should about do it. Now, like I said, guys, keep in mind you still not ready to crank and go okay because you will have to rewire the system so what i'm gonna do i, I have to make that part three because that's 10 minutes in itself explaining that what i'm gonna do is uh because i have to replace this anyway i'm gonna rig this to where i will have power supply in the right spots and ground in the right spots just so i can drive it and get it inside the shop <laughs> my goal continue and remains the same i don't want to push it in the shop all right. All I'm concerned with now is power and ground. The other three small wires that go to the sending unit, I do not care. I need to put these in their right spots. So in order to find out where the right spot is, basically need the wiring diagram. All right, let's take a look at something real quick. Okay, basically, guys, what they're saying is... Uh, this is your old connector. This is this. All right? So, basically, what they did was they left the power supply um, too high. This is the old connector, and this is the new connector that you're going to stall. 
So, okay. What we're dealing with is this connector. So basically, guys, what they did was they left the power supply in the same spot. The last pin. All right, see, fuel pump positive. All right, they left that in the same spot. So what they did on the old connector, the second spot, which used to be ground, they moved it over to the third slot. So basically, guys, all I got to do with this old connector to get it to run and get me in the shop was swap over two and three. Okay, and actually, don't even swap it. Just put the ground on the third slot. See here? This is the new connector this is the way the fuel pump is wired internally now okay this we're done with this okay so basically all i'm gonna do is move this ground pin over to pin three which would give me power supply and ground in pin three the car should run right now it will not run okay so what we need to do all right guys i have a pair of cutters again we are moving pin two to pin three again guys mind you i'm just doing this to get in the shop I'm just doing this so the car would run and i get in the shop this is not the correct way i'm gonna have to do another video on the correct way to do this so all i'm gonna do is just connect these two black and red go to this blue wire that moves ground to pin three and i'm gonna merely hook the blue and orange wire back to the blue and orange wire the one i shouldn't have cut anyway and you will need to separate these you don't want these to touch each other especially while you're running you could potentially pop a fuse cause a spark and cause a big kaboom you don't want a kaboom near any kind of fuel vapors all right guys that's enough right there to get started and running and into the shop let's find out I got it plugged up. Make sure uh, they're not touching each other. In fact, it's set there right there. Now, let's see if this thing start up, guys. I'm glad y'all are here with me. Where is the keys? Here we go, guys. There you have it. Y'all hear that? I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but the car is running. Okay, guys, we are done. We got it running. Uh, remember you're gonna have to go in and add install this new connector I just temporarily wired it so I can drive it into the shop and uh, that will be on part three guys so subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you will not miss it okay thanks for watching comment subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next video